This is Twit. First things first, before we actually talk about Google's response to the controversy, we have to talk about the controversy itself. Can you tell us about what happened with Gemini? Yeah, you may have seen this. So Gemini is Google's new, uh, you know, high powered AI model that competes with uh, GPT-4. It can create images and text and it got in trouble last week when some of the images it was creating just didn't quite seem right. So they would take uh, historical figures who were white and replace them with people of color, or it would refuse to generate images of white people altogether. And so this had people scratching their heads um, and of course, accusing Google of being woke. And what it really was, was, you know, Google, Google attempting like, like all companies pretty much uh, creating these, these LLM chat bots, um, trying to sort of keep them in line and keep them from doing embarrassing things. Um, ironically, it was that effort that actually uh, led to this mistake and, and created an even more embarrassing mess for Google. And, and the controversy kind of spilled into earlier this week when people found that the text generation part of Gemini was also, you know, doing weird things. Like someone asked it uh, to compare, you know, who had had a worst, Im- worst impact on society. Was it Elon Musk or Adolf Hitler? And Gemini said, well, they've both done some bad things. Um, it's hard to say who's worse. I mean, Whoa. it's it's been uh, it's been tough a tough week for um, for Google. They lost on Monday ninety billion dollars in market cap just based off of this controversy. So, uh, you know, it's it that that's a set that essentially is it in a nutshell. Okay, interesting. Um, I mean, so there's there's the controversy. Uh, everybody can take that for what they will. Let's talk about uh, Google and more specifically Sundar Pichai's response. What did Pichai have to say about those problematic responses and generations? Yeah, so um, you know Sundar sent an email out to staff on um, a couple couple nights ago, uh, basically saying this is unacceptable. We've totally messed up. We're going to make structural changes to how we manage, um, you know, product development. We're, you know, we're making progress on this issue. We'll, we'll have some results, you know, out there soon. Um, so, you know, he's essentially saying a bit of a mea culpa and look, we, you know, we're going to fix this problem. Um, that that's the response. I think there's a, there's a narrative now and a public relations problem for Google, um, where, you know, Sundar looks like he's having trouble sort of controlling the the culture of Google. Um, you know, I'm, I, I sort of see that more as a PR problem than an actual business or technology problem. Um, but that's kind of the, the, the latest out there. Uh, yeah. Uh, interesting. Uh, you know, the response there, I think is what one would expect obviously, but, um, kind of trying to, toe the line between we're fixing this and also uh, say, look, this is, we, we recognize this is bad, but also at the same time trying to say that, uh, you know, don't worry too much. It's going to be, it's going to be okay. We're going to get this uh, ironed out. Now, how does a company actually go about fixing uh, a generative AI tool? If, if it's, you know, if suddenly the tool starts misbehaving, what is the process of of getting it to you know do what it's supposed to do again? And uh, from you know your own research and understanding, is that something that takes a long time? Is that something that can happen quickly? What what uh, what happens when the alarm bells start ringing there? Yeah, I mean, I think first to just we should take a step back and sort of explain how these things work. I mean, mm-hmm. these models like Gemini or GPT four, they start out. I mean. GPT, you know, stands for uh, generalized pre-trained uh, model. So they're they it's a pre-trained model, and when it comes out, it's it's very raw. It's been trained on you know the entire internet, possibly synthetic data, and you know that includes video and text and all sorts of things, right? And it's drawn, you know, it's it's created this ability, this amazing ability to predict the next word or predict what image you're you're trying to generate. And then, and then spit something out that seems remarkably like what a human might do. And those models are so raw when they come out. They have all the bad stuff and the good stuff that's out there in the world, out there in the internet. And that includes, you know, bias, you know, race, like outright racism, 
um, you know, borderline, like pro- probably actual actual child pornography, right? Or CSAM as, as we call it today. And it really needs to be kept in check, especially for these public companies um, or companies like OpenAI that ca- really care about their, their public reputation. Um, or they're going to, you know, allow people to do stuff that's totally inappropriate. And then, of course, you know, those people will then, some of them will post it on the internet and say, look how bad this stuff is. And the whole thing is going to get shut down. So you do this process of, you know, reinforcement learning with human feedback, essentially training the model over again, um, putting a sort of layer of training on top of it, telling it, don't do these things. Or, or, you know, in the case of bias, like, you know, if you're going to, if somebody asks you to create an image of a doctor, don't create white men a hundred percent of the time, throw in some women and people make it look like, you know, the, the real world here. And these models don't think they're not, they're not people. They don't, they're not actually intelligent, right? Mm-hmm. Even though we call them artificial intelligence. So it's really hard to get them to do what you want them to do. And so I think that just takes expertise and time. I'm sure that Google can figure that out. That is not the, that part of it is not the sort of like fundamental AI breakthrough that makes this stuff possible. That's more like the work that needs to go into uh, training it. And I think it's a function of just companies like Google being pushed by the release of ChatGPT to come out with this this stuff so quickly and show that they're they're you know on top of their game. Um, and I'm rambling here, but I mean I think another thing that's really ironic is that I mean Google invented this the underlying technology, the transformer model that made all this stuff possible. They had this stuff probably before anyone else. And the reason they didn't release it is exactly this because they knew that it's, it's a, it's hard to predict. It's hard to, to keep under control and it could lead to embarrassing reputational damage for the company. Absolutely. And I mean, we've seen, these tools uh, being criticized for bias in the other direction. Uh, I remember even, it seems like it's been so long ago now, Microsoft's uh, little chat bot suddenly becoming a mm-hmm. horribly racist uh, bot. And, you know, that's that's gone on. We have, have from there, it seems like, you know, what you were talking about, the training says, don't always create doctors that are white. Don't always create... Um, these these different things that sort of stick out. And uh, I remember a number of AI tools for doing photo generation would almost always, when they were generating uh, female presenting individuals, they almost always were scantily clad, that kind of thing. And it sounds like this tuning that you just talked about as a way to kind of fix it, do you think that's kind of what put, what happened in the first place that it just somehow went over the top of what it was supposed to do. That seems very difficult, I guess is what I'm saying. It's, it it seems difficult to get these systems to find a balance because they can kind of take something and run with it almost. Is that the case? Yeah, I think, I think it is difficult and I, I think it's possible. I mean, we've seen, I think OpenAI do a pretty good job of keeping it, of, of improving it over time but they've had more time and they've had more runway, right? Because they're not Google. I think they're, they're able to make some more mistakes um, and sort of learn from the public, uh, you know, public feedback and, and, and keep improving on that. They're, they've been doing that work. For Google, it's, they've had less time and they also don't have as much of a margin for error. So, and I, I don't know this to be the case, but I, I also almost wonder if Google felt there was even more risk in possibly having those bias results or those results that might blow up in their face one day that they they may be pushed a little too hard on on the the reinforcement learning aspect of it and that's what led to this right like whereas it's a i think it's a very subtle art and i don't think these things will ever large language models you know they're just never going to get to the point where they're perfect right they're not going to be at, at least with the technology we have today i think the technology will improve and there may be more breakthroughs in the future, but they're always going to hallucinate mm-hmm. people who know what they're doing, who, you know, prompt engineers will always get them, you know, be able to get them to go off the rails or do something they're totally not supposed to do. Um, that That's just always going to be a problem. 
So that was actually kind of my last question there. If there was that Goldilocks solution, you know, can, do you foresee uh, AI getting it just right? It sounds like almost because of the human element, that's just not something that's possible, um, at least as the technology exists right now. And I, that, that's kind of the, the, the impression that I got, too, because even if you have something that uh, to the wide swath of humanity is the ideal, there are still going to be extremes on either side that say that it does this too much or it doesn't do that enough. It's sort of a, a, what, a sliding scale kind of, yeah? Yeah, I think we'll get there. I just don't think it's going to be with doing exactly the same methods that we're doing now, but just making the models better or doing, doing, you know, reinforcement learning better. I think it's going to take new methods mm -hmm. and people are working on those methods. If you look at what Meta is doing, I think it's really interesting where they're trying to create these, you know, models, smaller ones that are really good at one task and sort of tying them all together. Um, it's part of this sort of world model uh, idea that Jan LeCun is the head of AI, you know, AI over there. Um, there's, there are a lot of different ideas and I think we will get there. Um, but it's just, it's going to take new, new techniques. I think the other thing that's sort of interesting here is that, you know, of course this is, this has become, you know, this is now like beyond technology, beyond the technology story, right? It's on Fox news. They're talking about the woke Silicon Valley tech companies. It's sort of a, a continuation of this content moderation debate that we've had, you know, in the wake of the, the 2016 election. Um, there are people who believe that there shouldn't be any reinforcement. I mean, it were, you know, there, there really shouldn't be any attempt to make these things, you know, act and behave in this, in this sort of societally acceptable way you should just let them, you know, do what they do and trust that users are going to, to use them correctly. Mm. Right. And of course, of course, you know, you can be on either side of that debate, but that debate will be there, I think for some time. And it does, I think by, by, you know, making these things quote unquote safe, I think you do start losing some capability. We've, we've seen evidence of that. Oh, absolutely. Right. And I think people miss that, right? Like, even if you believe like, yeah, I mean, I, I'm all for, you know, all the diversity and all the stuff that the right would call woke, right? Um, you know, even if you're all for that, like you want that capability because you're not, you know, that you're not using it to, you know, I don't know, do, do things. Yeah. Do well, I'm using things. it responsibly. Right. And so when I go to use the, the, the this is a good example because, uh, someone, uh, here at work who uses the tool for what we do, there was a tool that they were using for so long that worked great. And then the company instituted a number of new policies specifically around copyright and sort of trained the model on that. And then even with content that we owned, trying to get it to, you know, ingest that content, it would say, we don't have proof that you have the rights to access this content. So we suddenly can't act on it. Yeah. And that's frustrating because up to that point, it had been a great tool that we were able to use. Can't use it anymore because these mm -hmm. uh, little blocks have been put in place. So yeah, capabilities definitely are lost and it makes sense why some of the most, um, uh, powerful uses of these tools end up being kind of the more open source, you do it locally systems where there aren't these uh, guardrails in place. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And I think it also sort of, it, it makes me wonder whether, you know, startups and, and, you know, open source companies are actually, this is how one of the advantages and one of the ways they can disrupt or unseat the incumbent tech companies, because they can, they can make these mistakes or they can sort of create products that, you know, maybe, maybe they're not as exposed to the public relations hits. They'll, you know, that, that will come out of, you know, the, these things producing kind of offensive, um, offensive outputs. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I don't know. It's a it's a real conundrum, I think, for for any big company making this stuff. Absolutely. Do you do you you you're take you sort of you can't win, right? You either <laughs> yeah. you're either going to get like criticized for bias and all all of, of sorts of other horrible things, or you're going to be criticized for being too woke or holding it back and making it less capable. So, 
I don't know. I don't know where the line is on this stuff. Darned if you do, darned if you don't. <laughs> Reed Elvergati, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Uh, it is great always to get to chat with you. Of course, folks can head over to semaphore.com to check out your work. How do they get that newsletter, that sweet, sweet newsletter? Yeah, it's super easy. You just type in your email address um, and and we will send you a free technology newsletter twice a week, which most people seem to like. So I encourage you to do that and 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 love when I get emails from readers um, with feedback. So I uh, it's a it's a good community we're building over at Semaphore uh, Tech and hope to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching this little chunk of Tech News Weekly. If you'd like to get the full episode, well, head over to twit.tv slash TNW. There you'll find buttons you can click or tap to subscribe to the entire show in audio and video formats. Or just look in the description. We've got links down there as well.